Hi guys, so today I have a little get ready with me video and I'm going to be using a lot of new stuff. I got the awesome, beautiful Tarte Be Magnificent palette. I'm also going to be using the new Rimmel Stay Matte Liquid Mousse Foundation. I already did a first impression review on this. I wore it all day yesterday. Also picked up the Benefit Boing Concealer because I am absolutely tired of trying out drugstore concealers that just don't seem to work. Things that I'm just not totally happy with so I figured I would try a high-end one and hopefully it will work out a little better. And lastly, one of these Maybelline, I think they're called the Color Elixir? Something Elixir lip gloss lip lacquer kind of deals. Gonna be trying that too. So to start off I used my Neutrogena Oil Free Moisturizer and I've let that set in for a good long time. It's been about half an hour or so so that's all sunk into my skin and ready to go. So I'm gonna start by priming with the Benefit Professional. It definitely has a very silicone -y, smooth, silky kind of feeling to it, like most of the primers that I already have. And I can really already tell that my pores are looking pretty filled in, looking pretty good. Now I'm going to go in with my Rimmel Stay Matte Foundation. The color I picked up is number 91 Light Ivory. I'm just going to put a big old blob on my hand and then take my Beauty Blender and start applying it. Like I said in my first impression, I'm not totally sure about the color of this one. I can't seem to put my finger on it quite what the deal is, but it's just not quite right for my skin tone. And I believe I used a little much on my hand. And as with all of my other foundation, this stuff looks especially great when I use the Beauty Blender. I really like the finish of it now that I've used this one. Man, I have so much product left over. I hate to waste it, but I'm not gonna pile it on, so. All right, so that big old blob that I used, you really only need about half of it to do your whole face. Now going in with the Boing Concealer. I'm just gonna take it on my finger and use it on the under eye area. The reason I chose this one over the other couple concealers that Benefit has is because when I swatched it on my hand, it dried pretty quickly, and the other one stayed pretty tacky, and I didn't want them to sink into my fine lines or anything, so I decided to go with the drier formula. And I'm just going to go back in with my Beauty Blender just to kind of soften up any of the edges, just to make it look the same kind of finish as the rest of my foundation and everything. Now I'm just going to go in with my Rimmel Stay Matte Powder. This one is in Transparent and my e.l.f. Big Fluffy Kabuki Brush. I'm just going to set my T-zone area. I don't want to set all over my face because I'm afraid it might look a little powdery with this super matte foundation. And then also the under eye because I put that concealer there. For my brows, I'm going to use my trusty little quad from Flower Beauty. This is the Foxy Browns quad, and I'm taking the matte dark brown to fill in my eyebrows. And you guys have probably seen me do this a million billion times, so we can just fast forward through this part. I switch between brow products so often. Sometimes I really like to do them with a powder. Sometimes I'd much prefer a pencil, because I do find that a pencil is quicker. I can get them done faster. And it takes quite a while to do my brows with a powder, but I always think that the final result looks much better with a powder. And I'm going to set them with the gel side of this Pixie Natural Brow Duo. This gel is awesome. It definitely keeps them in place all day long. They even like feel kind of stiff, so I mean if you have a problem with that, then you probably wouldn't want to go for this. But the stiffness of it really lets me know that it is working. I'm just so excited to use this thing. <laughs> I'm going to take my Lorac Behind the Scenes Eyeshadow Primer and apply that to my lids. So I'm going to start off by taking this little color right here. It is called Rose to the Occasion. And I'm going to take it on, you guessed it, my favorite little blending brush, the Eco Tools Blendy Guy. And I'm going to place it into my crease, above my crease. Maybe I should zoom you guys in. Alright, that's a little better. This is a really pretty color. I really like the more 
mauve purpley tones in my crease. I'm also going to take it on the actual little brush that comes with the kit on this more fluffy end over here. Just to get a little bit more concentrated right at my crease line. I actually really like this little brush. Like I said, I was playing around with this palette last night. I think you could totally do a look with just this little brush. And this is such a big, great size mirror, man. So now I'm just going to go into this pretty creamy shade. It's called Sand Out from the Crowd, and I'm going to place that under my brow bone. These are all really nice pigmented shades, even though the majority of them are pretty light, they're still really pigmented. Pigmented. I can't speak. For my skin tone in particular, this is a pretty nice shade. It's pretty close to my natural skin tone kind of shade, but it just really finishes off a good look. Next I'm going to go in with this pretty light peachy kind of color. It's called Peach for the Stars, and I'm going to place that above my crease, kind of in between where I put that crease shade and my brow bone shade. And this color actually comes off um, a little darker than you would think from the pan. Next, on a kind of pointy little brush from Coastal Scents, I'm going to go into, what's this one called? Two Plums Up, the pretty purpley color from this palette. I'm just going to dab it on the outer corner area. then go back in and blend it in a second. Now with the flat side of the little brush that comes in the palette, I'm going to go back into that creamy shade, which I have brow bone, and place that on my lid area. Bringing it all the way into the inner corner. And this shadow is a little powdery, but it still has really nice pigmentation. blending it up into the crease a little bit. And then going back in with the fluffier side to blend out the edges with the purples. And just for a teeny bit more depth, I'm going to use this black down here. They call it don't stand black and it's called a liner but it's just a really um, kind of a thicker consistency of a powder with the um, a fluffy end of that little brush that comes in the palette just a little dab there on the end and just dabbing it on the very outer sections of my lid then wiping it off and using it to blend just a little bit. So I feel like I want the kind of like a cut crease kind of look so I'm going to go back into Peach for the Stars which is this middle top row one and add some more depth. Also going back into Rose to the Occasion to add a little more too. I do somewhat wish that they had more darker colors in here. I mean, I know that the 
um, matte black and the matte brown little liners down at the bottom are super handy, super helpful, but I wish that like these two shades right here were just a tad bit darker. And I have pretty light skin to begin with, so I'm sure those with darker skin tones probably are thinking the same thing. For the lower lashes, I'm taking this little smudger kind of brush from Coastal Scents, and I'm going into the taupey color over here. And packing that onto my lower lash line. And smudging it out. I think this color is a pretty perfect lower lash kind of color. It brings some definition down there, but it's not too heavy or too dark. I do want to add a little bit more depth though, so I'm going to go in with the brown out of the liner little collection down there. And pack that focusing on the outer section and bringing it in. Oh, that's really pigmented. <laughs> that's a bit darker than I was expecting. And then just wiping off that brush and going into the outer section and kind of feathering it up to join with the upper lid stuff. I think I'm going to go in with a little bit of that purple to help join them together a little better. And back in with my Eco Tools to kind of blend out that very outer edge. Now I'm going to go in with my Urban Decay Black Market 24-7 pencil and line my tight line and waterline. And I'm going to go in with the matte black with a little, what is this, an angled brush to align my upper lash line. And curl my lashes and apply some mascara. This is the NYX Curvaceous Mascara. So to contour today, I'm going to use my Too Faced Chocolate Soleil Bronzer and one of these Eco Tools Retractable Kabukis, is that what it's called? And I like to rub the product on my hand first so I don't get too, too much pigmentation when I apply to my face. Face. Why can't I talk today? And of course I'm going to have to go in with the blush from this palette. It's called Elevated. I don't own any of the Tarte Amazonian Clay blushes, but people have said that it's similar to Exposed. So let's see how that goes. I'm going to use this little angled kabuki from an Eco Tools set. It's definitely something that um, it's not going to go overboard too easily because it does have such a natural look to it. I really like it. I really like this blush. So to top everything off, I have the Maybelline Color Elixir. I'm pr I, I really hope that that's what it's called, the Color Elixir. This one is in Raspberry Rhapsody, and I'm going to use that on my lips. It looks more pinky than it does here in the tube. I thought it was going to be like crazy dark, but I think it's a pretty nice color. I like this one. So this is my little completed makeup look for the day. I really hope you guys enjoyed this type of video. I really liked it, using a bunch of different new stuff all together so I can kind of get a real first impression on everything all at one time. I hope you guys like this style of get ready with me. If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, and I will talk to you guys really soon. Bye!